Okay, so good afternoon everyone. We, we, we shall begin right now. So thank you for being here with us today. I'm Jesslyn May, the moderator, as well as one of the speakers today. So it's commonly said that hardware startup is actually a riskier bet as compared to a software startup. And also developing a hardware product is definitely more challenging than a software. Okay, so it's actually pretty true to a certain extent. And I believe some of you might be actually running or working on the hardware company and you probably would agree with me. Okay, so which is why today we are here today uh, to discuss on the question on how do you get hardware startup off the ground in Asia. So you probably will have some you know complex question in your mind like when is the right time to launch a product? Should you do it during the MVP stage or how can you actually estimate the fund that you need to produce an X amount of like stock and what kind of like business model can you adopt you know to make it more attractive to investors stuff like this. Alright, so today we will be talking about these few topics and uh, if you are actually uh, you know, working in a hardware startup or running a hardware startup, so perhaps can you give a, maybe a yes in the chat box to indicate that you are actually in that space. Okay. Okay, so before I begin, I would like to you know share some housekeeping rules today. You can continue to you know share your yes in the chat box. So firstly, uh, please turn off your audio and video throughout uh, until the end of the session whereby we will have this open discussion session. So I know some of you may be you know very excited to ask questions. You can also post your question at the chat box. Or at the end during the open discussion, uh, you can on your audio and video and ask personally to the speakers. Okay, please note that this session is actually broadcasted live on Facebook on multiple pages. So uh, we would greatly greatly appreciate if you can share with your peers, uh, be it this uh, Google Meet link or uh, share it over Facebook, so that uh, they may benefit from this session. So if you have any technical difficulty, uh, you can contact our colleague over here, uh, Abi, uh, in this number at the bottom. Okay, so post your question, look at A, box A, that's where you can click and open your chat box and post a question. Uh, you can mute it, B, and also turn off your audio C. Okay, I shall leave it for a while. Oh, I think everybody is good, right? Okay, so I am Jesslyn Bay, co-founder of Blessung Consulting. A very quick introduction for those people who may not know about Blessung Consulting. Uh, we are a business consultancy firm that is headquartered in Singapore uh, with offices in Taiwan, Thailand and Malaysia coming up. So our presence is all around uh, this region because we have support from our sister companies, uh, strategic partners, uh, uh, like someone like Nancy who is also in this uh, webinar today. So she is actually based in Finland right now. Okay, uh, We are also a partner of Mighty Net Hardware Express Program for this current cohort, uh, which we will be sharing more later. Uh, they will be recruiting some of the startups who may want to join uh, this particular program. So another main organizer as well as speaker today is Ray, CEO of Mighty Net. So perhaps I will let Ray to do a very short introduction about himself. Yeah, Ray, please. Hello, everybody. My name is Ray. Uh, I'm from Taiwan and the CEO of the Mighty Net, and also the uh, vice president of the Mighty Electronic Group. Uh, we are very focused on the IoT and the automotive uh, industry. And we also uh, have a very big uh, community uh, in Taiwan for the maker, for Huawei, for IoT, we call the Maker Pro. And we are also uh, one of the uh, Taiwanese uh, rapid prototype center. Uh, we helped a lot of the uh, IoT star to build out their prototyping and uh, going to the final mass production. I'm glad to be here to share more experience and uh, any question related to the IoT uh, Away, and I'm glad to share my experience with you guys. Thanks. Thank you, Ray. Okay, so this is an agenda for today. We will have three sharing sessions. In total, you will not take more than an hour. So I'll discuss. I'll be discussing about the opportunities in Asia hardware innovations, uh, whereby Ray will be talking about. Uh, the perspective in, in, in the terms of uh, the manufacturers and she, he was also sharing about the MightyNet 
Hardware Express second cohort program uh, of 2020. So at the end, we will also have an open discussion where you can ask any question regarding um, the hardware innovations or even uh, regarding the program itself. Okay. Okay. On behalf of the organizer as well, I would like to thank you again for joining us today. So my TNET Hardware Express program is actually supported by Taiwan Startup Terrace, uh, which is also a leading innovation service provider in APEC region, set up by Tai uh, Taiwan uh, government agency. Startup Terrace provides office, co-working space, uh, housing that you can tap on both as a local as well as a foreign startup. So you, you may actually ask to raise this question uh, regarding this space later if this is something that you are interested in. So we are also very honoured to have um, Daily Social, the leading Indonesian media partner today, uh, who actually cover startup news in Southeast Asia, and also True Digital Park from Bangkok, Thailand, uh, who is also a tech and startup hub, whereby there are a couple of like startup uh, accelerators in the space itself, and also co uh, there's a co-working, a few co-working space in that um, area. Okay. So without a further ado, I'll kick start with my two cents of like insights on the opportunity in hardware innovation in Asia. Okay, the question that we often receive is, you know, is hardware innovation actually over? So especially for a country whereby, uh, in Singapore, whereby we do not have a lot of like hardware manufacturer in this country itself. Okay, so before you answer that question, perhaps look at the device that you are using right now to assess this web right now. The chip to improve the machine learning performance for IoT, drones, AR, VR, the, the gears for AR, VR, wearables, or power grid to store those green energy. Okay. All this involve hardware innovation. So my answer to this question is no, but actually to what extent? So this one we shall find out in the next few slides. Okay, look at this statistics over here. In the Internet of Things, it is the hot topic that we are in the, in this time era. So just within three years, the hardware spending on IoT is expected to increase almost 100 billion globally. Okay, so if you look at the next statistic that we talk about, Asia Pacific may become the global leader in IoT spending. Okay, 36% of the global spending is actually taken up by Asia Pacific. And if you zoom in further, in terms of the country, China, South Korea, and India will be taking up the most due to the sizable population. Yeah. So you go back to the question that I actually asked earlier. Is hardware innovation actually over? Okay, you may not answer the question, but let's look into next slide. What is the link to hardware innovation? <laughs> Okay, the statistic here shows that the hardware spending is the second top spending group in 2019. Uh, if you compare it to IoT software, there's a, a huge disparity. Okay, so this within the hardware uh, spending on IoT itself, sensor and module purchase comprises 80% of the spending. Yeah, so the answer to the question of hardware innovation, whether is it over, is of course. Uh, no. So in terms of the country with the fastest compound annual growth rate, uh, construction is the highest, followed by telecom and healthcare. So I believe the growth in this region are attributed to uh, many factors and uh, two of the main ones are, in my opinion, is actually increasing internet and smart uh, phone penetration uh, in the consumer market as well as there's an increase in middle class group which is rising very rapidly in some countries in Southeast Asia, especially the developing ones. Okay. Uh, secondly, there is also an uh, increasing number of like, projects for smart city, whereby APEC actually take up one third of the uh, global smart city spending uh, within that four years, from 2019 to 2023. So some of the examples of scheme that you can look at, uh, which are stated here, so, like for example, in Singapore, there are actually a couple of like competition run by the government, uh, in collaboration with like enterprises, uh, where they, they actually select you know startups who actually provide certain solutions to fit the company. So this is where you can also get access to some projects with the corporates, uh, stuff like this. Okay, so these are a few areas that you can look into if you are 
uh, startup in that particular region. So actually, in fact, ASEAN actually launched an uh, ASEAN Smart City Network initiative in 2018, whereby 26, 26 pilot cities have been selected uh, to test out the smart city uh, solution. So in terms of IoT implementation by country in Southeast Asia by sector, uh, there are some priorities uh, in each country and they are unique. Okay? Like for example, Singapore is not shown here, but for Singapore development of IoT, uh, it's actually quite in line with the mobility, healthcare, financial services, energy uh, management area. Yeah, like even in Thailand, uh, Thailand, Thailand 4.0, I believe some of you have heard it. Uh, there are actually some initiatives regarding uh, Internet of Things to making things smart, uh, machine stuff like this. Okay, these are a few areas that you can research on if uh, you are in this space. Okay, so these days, hardware startup have actually pretty much uh, many options for business model. Yeah, and many inspiration from uh, other bigger companies. Okay, uh, you, you probably don't need to be a big company. Maybe you can create some new models that actually uh, can break through the whole industry. Uh, I think this is something that we are looking forward to it. So it's no longer just like a one-time traditional purchase, but whereby you provide no warranty. Uh, there are also like business models such as uh, having recurring you know, cash flow, uh, like a car rental service, whereby they, are, they can be like customizable you know, offerings, customer lifetime value is actually longer and more specificity uh, for the consumer for the second model. Okay, so how many as a service a model that is uh, rising very fast right now? Everybody is talking about subscription, subscription, and this is actually quite applicable for hardware uh, companies. Like for example, uh, a very simple one like leasing your printer. So you lease a printer, you pay monthly fee, so you, as a customer, you don't need to worry about upgrades, uh, installation, repair, and such. And um, the printer is obviously still owned by the company. Okay. So another strategy that is commonly adopted today is hardware enabled services. So number four. So companies such as like Xiaomi, Amazon, Fitbit, uh, they actually adopt this strategy uh, very well. Uh, I'm not. Fitbit maybe uh, is quite debatable because now we have a lot of like competitors like Apple, Samsung, uh, you know, Gami. Yeah, so at, at least from the start, they were doing actually pretty quite well. Okay, so providing female models for services such as like maintenance, storage, and like the only thing that you actually have to worry about is um, you have to plan ahead. Uh, is to, is if you are really adopting this kind of business model, what are the special, how can you package the, the services into a uh, price? I think this is something that you have to think ahead uh, from the very beginning if this is something that you are going to adopt. Okay, so uh, the last one is consumable. So it's actually a uh, simple as about example would be a like coffee machine with capsule. So hardware, you will consume the component, uh, whereby this cons component have to be replaced. And this actually increased the customer stickiness in some way. Okay, so take a look at this case study, Xiaomi. I believe everybody knows uh, who is Xiaomi, and Xiaomi started as phone. Okay, so if you look back many years ago, when Xiaomi first started, uh, obviously it's also it's on a volume game. But how exactly do they earn with you know by selling such a affordable, very affordable you know, phone? Okay, so how they did it is because they actually, you know, partner with a few uh, third-party software company whereby they allow them to pre-install their software on the phone itself. So every time that is, uh, they sell a phone, uh, the third-party software company will have to pay like $1. So that's where, you know, Xiaomi will do a revenue sharing with them uh, by in exchange providing them the traction, the eyeball. Yeah. So in fact, until now today, uh, you look at the data here, the hardware profit margin is actually 5%. Okay, so the concept is still uh, still in place today. Yeah. So you look at the internet services, the growth rate, the, the kind of services that they have. 
Okay, so so selling strategy is to use the hardware as a platform whereby they sell additional services. So this is something that you probably can study further. There are a lot of books talking about this, a lot of case study online that you can have a look uh, to, to study whether this is applicable to your business. But it may not be always applicable, so please take note of that. Okay, so the last session from my end, funding a hardware startup. Okay, it's always costly because you always have to produce products and um, like hardware products. You, or you can ask Ray yourself to give you some estimation, you know, the, the amount of money that you actually need to prepare. Yeah. Okay. So um, there are a few ways. Uh, crowdfunding traditionally is more applicable for consumer goods, uh, like Kickstarter, Indiegogo. Usually they are consumer goods or, or some concept, you know, inviting people to some concert, stuff like that. But recently, we actually see a, a couple of like you know platforms that is more targeted for B two P. Like for example, in Taiwan, we also have a client uh who actually created this vendor specific B two B to C platform, a uh, crowdfunding platform. So where that whereby they will crowdfund uh products where then this can purchase it and sell it to their patient or use it on their patient. Okay, so when you crowdfund your product, um. There are a few things that you have to take note. Uh, firstly, the benefit will be you are actually fostering some direct you know, communication between the partner yourself as well as the end user. But one thing you have to take note is you probably need large online presence. Okay, a lot of money have to be spent on marketing, or at least you have to use a smart way to create some, you know, present digitally before you can create a very successful crowdfunding platform. And many people actually use this as a strategy, uh, when they do crowdfunding. Like for example, whatever you see on Indiegogo or Kickstarter, the amount that have been back, do you think all of them are actually consumer themselves? Okay. Yeah, it, it, they may not be consumer themselves. It could be the case whereby at the bank, the company have already made a deal with like corporate client whereby they can purchase in bulk on the crowdfunding campaign. So by doing this, what is the whole purpose? Okay, of course, uh, the goal itself, wherever you see like uh, able to achieve like 200% over the goal, uh, able to achieve 1000% over the goal, that will be more impressive to, to the public, right? So these are the strategies that you may be able to adopt as a hardware startup uh, via this kind of like fundraising method. So secondly, supplier financing, which can be your option, whereby uh, finance the company will lend you the money to buy raw materials. Uh, Thirdly, purchase order financing. The difference between this and purchase order financing versus a supplier financing is that um, for purchase order financing, you already have buyer in place and it's reputable buyer. But the main downside for this is uh, because the finance company who, who lend you the money will collect direct, directly from your customer. So your customer may know that you are actually not in the solid financial position. Yeah, so that's the only that's that's the main downside that you have to weigh accordingly if you are opting for this option. Fourth, partner with manufacturer. Uh, there are a few ways to do so. Uh, one typical way is amortization, whereby you get like free interest rate. It's like interest free rate, whereby a manufacturer will actually invest an amount to you, like loan you an amount, but they charge every extra dollar per unit. Uh, for the first first as amount of dollar, uh, as amount of unit that they manufacture for you. Okay, so usually this one, you don't involve any equity, uh, but you can also have another agreement. Another way is to utilize their manufacturer uh, engineering department. So support can come in in the form of like uh, sweat resources, helping you to finalize your design, whereby they will you know, get any exclusive manufacturing rights for your company uh, for a period of time. That could be the arrangement. Okay. Uh, the third one could be payment terms. Uh, you know, special payment terms whereby they get paid when your customer actually pay you. Yeah. So last but not least, uh, that's something that most people will be familiar on is uh those other setup fundraising methods like you know getting into accelerators, um, getting into um, getting angel investor, a VC such like this. Okay, so I have come to my end of my session. My end session. So let's invite Ray to share more in the perspective of a manufacturer. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ray, so, 
Uh, I will share my screen. Yes. So can everybody see my screen? Okay. Okay, so um, uh, I would like to share some experiences uh, regarding the Huawei innovation uh, from the manufacturing view. So let's uh, talk about a little bit about the mighty net. So we are actually a very, very old company. Uh, it's a Mike electronic group. We start our business from the 1986. And we also have two facility uh, in mainland China. Uh, on the uh, this we set out the, in 1996 and 2008, and we start the, the mighty net as a accelerator program uh, from the Tsinghua University uh, by uh, 2016. And we also have the several R&D and sales office around Taiwan. So. Our customer base, uh, before uh, we actually do a lot of business with uh, overseas customers like the uh, European and uh, North America and the rest of the uh, Taiwan. Uh, some of you probably know is like the uh, D-Link, Acer, and Mediatek. Uh, they are all our customers. But uh, the story we uh, the story we uh, start cooperate with uh, you. Uh, how we start is actually from the 2005 and from the Ubiquiti, which is the top three uh, networking company of the world now. But they actually, we start cooperating with the uh, Ubiquiti from 2005. And after six years, uh, the company IPO has not stopped with uh, 3 billion uh, marking uh, value and uh, so how we unicorn. And after uh, war, uh, the founder, Robert Perra, he became the top 10 of youngest uh, the uh, bidding area of the world. So he's the founder of the Ubiquiti. Uh, he's very young and very rich, and he also uh, buy an NBA team now. So he's also an owner of the uh, one of the NBA team. Another unicorn uh, didn't uh, IPO yet is Six Fast from France. Uh, they, they are also one of the telecommunication company. And huh? so, Jesse, can you see my? Uh, yes, can. Okay, okay, okay. So this is the two founder uh, from the uh, Sigfast, and we start cooperation uh, with the Sigfast uh, by the two thousand sixteen. And they are one of their uh, telecommunication unicorns, well. So after this, we are trying to find more and more uh, Huawei star in the Huawei unicorn. And uh, as uh, Jesse Bell uh, just mentioned, uh, the trend of the Huawei is still increasing, and the Huawei innovation is never over. And from the um, uh, from the VC uh, view uh, in the global checking. There are a lot of the company uh, getting funds from the Huawei side. And also, we see uh, they are looking for the Huawei enabled uh, star as well. And the Huawei star, they also IPO a lot. The number is also increased. Uh, like the uh, GoPro and from the sporty camera, Phoebe uh, is a wearable device and just acquired by Google this year, and Razer. Uh, is a, a gaming unicorn from Singapore. Uh, Sonos is for the smart speaker. Uh, of course, Xiaomi and Huami is also the uh, consumer uh, of unicorn. Another trend we find is uh, uh, not just consumer uh, Huawei unicorn. Um, there are a lot of unicorns. They are actually from the different field, like the healthy care, uh, B2B, and also automotive. Uh, recently, the automotive uh, highway is very, very popular, especially in uh, middle of China. And we also find another fact is the uh, software giant uh, like the Google, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, they are 
building lots of hardware and also acquired hardware star. Google acquired Phoebe and also buy a phone, uh, cell phone uh, development team from HTC. Microsoft have the Surface uh, product line. Uh, Amazon um, first has the Kingdom and then the Echo a smart speaker and also acquired the uh, Converse for the AGV and Dream for the smart bill. And a lot of the uh, merger and acquire story from uh, the uh, software giant. The reason I think the big software giant and acquire the, the Huawei is because uh, the next uh, war in AI, you need to have the Huawei to acquire the data from the real world. And IoT will be the excellent uh, uh, factor to acquire the data from the real world. And Taiwan, uh, of course, is very important, especially for the manufacturing in Taiwan. We are number one electronic manufacturing service of the world, and the number two of, of the semiconductor. And our economic st st stability is number one of the world, and our R&D and our IP is also very aggressive. So in the past, because we are very famous uh, in the semiconductor, that uh, we are going to be the star islands in the future. But the challenge for how we start is very, very different. Just like the uh, statements from the, the founder of LinkedIn, uh, you jump off the cliff and you assemble an airplane on the way down. It means that to build up the highway is really, really hard. So people always say the highway is hard. But I would say, what's the hard part? What's the question mark? I'd like to come back to the manufacturing. So for manufacturing, it's actually not the hard part. It's easy. Uh, this picture is actually uh, took from our factory. Uh, it's in the very, very old picture, but uh, I would say it's just took by two years ago. But the, the factory is really, really not changed too much. The, uh, Process we use for manufacturing, like the SNT, like the shoe hole, like semiconductor, they are continually uh, grows and uh, over over ten years, and uh, nothing change too much. But what makes it so hard for the highway? The first of all, we need to understanding what the uh, factor from the highway star teams. This is a, a profile uh, to indicate the highway uh, starting. Most of them, they do have the one, two, three years experience and uh, uh, the employee account is around four to 10 and the occasion is from 44% uh, from BA and 35% uh, from uh, math degree and only 9% from THD. And the age, the average age is from the 26 to 30. For the 6 to 10 people, there are actually a lot of things they need to do for how we start. Mechanical engineer, electronic engineer, software, marketing, firmware, sourcing, industrial design. 82% of the uh, service they need to also see from the other company, they cannot do themselves. And for the traditional uh, development phase, uh, there will be the uh, EVT engineer validation testing, uh, DVT design validation testing, PVT small run production testing, and uh, mixed production. And most of them uh, have the different quantity like in EVT, probably you only need to uh, do five to 10 pieces. In DVT, you probably need only uh, 20 to 30 pieces. And for the uh, PVT, is around 20, uh, 50 to uh, 100. And for mass production, uh, it will be over 100 pieces. And normally, the first lot from the Star Hub is about uh, uh, 500 to uh, 2,000 uh, pieces. So the challenge for the Huawei Star is actually uh, three different things. First of all, will be the funding, the money, the cost. The secondary will be the R&D research, 
development, design, manufacturing. And the, the hard part is to find the need, find the forecast from the uh, your user, find the need, find the next product. So there will be some tips uh, I would like to show you guys. The first one is uh, design is not equal to the manufacturing. Many good ideas could be uh, designed, can be graphic, but most of them cannot be manufactured or duplicate. Uh, example, um, this is uh, one of the smart rings that are very successful from the crowdfunding and uh, over 345% uh, uh, over target. And uh, uh, they cause a lot of delay and uh, Finally, they produce um, the smart ring like the, the right picture. So it's totally different from the concept because it's really hard to put a very, very small display uh, in, inside of the ring. The tip two, uh, cost and the cash flow is very keen and the whole the star, they are hard to uh, estimated the, the cost and the cash flow. This is one of the cases um, from Taiwan. Uh, this is a smart feeder uh, for cats. So the, there will be one camera uh, to detect the face of the cat and also detect its weight from the scale and the con control the food holder and the dis to distribute uh, the volume of the, uh, the feed. They raise the, the first product from uh, uh, Kickstarter uh, and their success. And uh, uh, the baker uh, is over a hundred, uh, over a uh, thousand, uh, fifteen. And but in the end, they find from the design, the tuning cost is really, really high. It's totally two times over their uh, big monies. So they are trying to simple, uh, simplify their design to re uh, reduce the, the tuning costs. So this is the second uh, generation of their design. You can see uh, they try to simple, uh, simplize some of the parts and then cut some of the additional parts to, uh, uh, to minus the, the tuning costs. But in the end, they uh, just give up because uh, the tuning cost is too high, so they just use a carbon um, and the one cell phone to realize the, their uh, idea. So you can imagine the consumer, the user, the baker is so angry to see the, the final result. So the cash flow uh, is really a key for the highway. Uh, not just uh, the payment term uh, with the factory, the payment term with your sales channel is also very important. So there is only uh, three, uh, three ways you can get the money before you ship the product. One is a crowdfunding or pre-sale. Uh, the secondary is uh, to get the funding from the angel, angel fund or the uh, VC and also win the lottery. It's very, really hard for the highway to get the money before you can really ship the goods. So, so the tip three, uh, cost plus feature plus quality plus schedule is actually equal to one. It means when you come out to new feature or you would like to uh, have better quality of your product, you, your cost, your schedule will be changed. This is an example from the uh, uh, donor. This is an actual portable uh, personal uh, uh, UVA, and they can detect uh, the HD video and, and also one of the capture platform. There is very, very small to fit, uh, to fit the palm uh, of your hand and uh, intelligent enough to fly it all uh, by itself. But when the uh, Donald go to the crowdfunding, uh, they are very successful from UK. And they get to uh, over uh, two million uh, pounds, but uh, 
finally they have failed because uh, uh, they they are too success. They are getting twenty times beyond the target and they put uh, a huge person uh, pressures uh, to the team and force them to uh, develop additional feature and expand the uh, production scale for each order. So in the end, they are rushed into the production before the functional blood product has not yet proved uh, in order to catch the deadline. So finally, this project fails as well. So for different scale of production line, it's really cause different issue. For to build up one or two lectures uh, watch, is you probably need just one people and one workshop. But to produce like the wearable device like Xiaomi uh, wearable band or uh, Apple Watch, you actually need a different scale and different investment. So to understand your uh, the product scale of you, uh, your quantity is very important because it means you need to find a different solution and different factory to fit your need. So normally, uh, how a company they are working at least one to three months to build up their uh, first uh, prototype. And from the prototype to the mass production, you will at least need three to six months. This is only for the accessory or personal digital product. If you are going to build up the automotive product or aerospace uh, products, is uh, another story. And the, the average uh, how we start going to IPO would took uh, eight years. So the tip four, um, not just DFN, uh, people always heard uh, from the DFN is a design for manufacturing, but uh, you also need to consider design from your supply chain. Is uh, the case, uh, kiosk is actually a wearable device. They are very success in the early of the uh, 2016. But then after um, they uh, launched their uh, campaign, they are trying to find a good partner uh, to build up their uh, product. And uh, they are failed because uh, they are cheated by their uh, manufacturing partner. And uh, uh, they mentioned they do not have any working relationship uh, with uh, any other solution company or the Chinese factory. And uh, the factory also cheat them to pay 50% of the money to secure uh, one key component is a, uh, is a 2,000, uh, 20,000 unit uh, uh, panels. And they are just marketing team without any hardware experience. So to understand it, the uh, supply chain is very important, especially you are come up with a really innovative product like smart wearable device, smart clothing. Um, this is clothing, uh, this picture show uh, some uh, insight uh, for us. When you come out to uh, build up one smart clothing product, it's not just related to the electronic manufacturing. It's also related to different uh, field like the clothing field. And the two industrial, is uh, never uh, cooperated before. So it's really hard to integration between the different domain and supply chains. For IoT, you need to at least go through the six different kind of supply chain, like the chip solution, chip agent, design house, and certification is very uh, keen, and uh, manufacturing, of course. And you also need to deal the cloud service, no matter uh, Azure or AWS or GCP. So it's really hard for one team, few people to control all the supply chain. That's why we say for software, it's actually the solo uh, business, but for Huawei, it's a symphony business. So that's why we think the Huawei accelerated is a need for us. And uh, in the end, uh, it's a very uh, famous statement from the um, Mac Anderson. 
he mentioned the software is eating the world. But uh, he also mentioned it's time to build. Because from the COVID-19 situation, from the trade, uh, the trade war between the American and the men of China, people find the uh, Huawei is really an important fact. And I, we believe that Huawei is the last mile to the innovation because it's a, to relax to the people's life, the Huawei is still the need. Everything we touch is a re, uh, it's all about the Huawei. So we think the, the Huawei innovation will be the last mile to uh, the innovation. Okay. So uh, is any question? Yeah. Uh, maybe we can ask question later. You can share about the accelerator programs. Okay. So yeah. let me share about the the accelerator program. So if anyone have any question, you can also share it at the chat box. Um, so so people can oh so Jesse, can you see the, the share screen? Yes, I can see. Okay, great. Yeah. So let's talk about the our uh, Huawei uh, Express programs. So uh, as I mentioned, the MikeNet actually is uh, uh, we are inspired by by a magnet. Uh, uh magnet Nate that the continuity of chat how we innovate it and build a strong community of the Huawei chat user. And the uh, Mighty Net Huawei Express is a founder in the 2016, last year. It's a, a Huawei focus accelerator program. And we are focused on the last mile of innovation. And we are hoping to keep good ideas and the opportunity in this network and the build up a strong Huawei ecosystem uh, of the world. So it's a milestone I just mentioned. And actually, except for um, Taiwan, we also have two facilities in mainland of China. And we also have different uh, sales and on the office in Taiwan. We have around 200 people located in Taiwan, including the R&D manufacturing uh, people. And we have the additional two facilities in mainland of China. It's very close to Shenzhen. So the customer base I just mentioned. So we are the one uh, accelerator who actually have the experience to cooperate with uh, uh, Unicorn. Uh, not just Ubiquity and also Sigfast. And we believe the more and more Unicorn will happen, will uh, cooperate from our community. So the service I just mentioned, there are a lot of service from zero to one, and one to uh, the country final products, there are lots of things to do. And we are actually provide a one-stop shop a solution uh, from the zero to one and one to uh, a hundred. We are very uh, focused on in two fields of production. First, we call the networking, now it's IoT. So we really uh, we, we really build up the uh, from the basic component like wireless component uh, from our facility and also uh, router switch hub for D-Link and uh, antenna solution for Ubiquiti as well. Another part we do is uh, automotive product. Again, we also build up the uh, basic uh, component like the valve actuator and body control module. Uh, we also going to build up some uh, drive along system vocal interface like the OBD2 and also some of the lead, lead tester for tire. So for the program itself, uh, we actually uh, started this program uh, from last year. It's uh, supported by the Star Terrence. It's a government supported uh, Star Terrence program. And we are looking for uh, four different uh, technology and four different domain. The first technology we are looking for is uh, related to IoT. So uh, if you are uh, going to build out the IoT device with uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, 4G, uh, LP WAN, like Sigfast, LoRa, MBLT, uh, we are looking forward to. 
And sensor, uh, we are experienced with a different kind of sensor like air quality, water quality, accelerometer, driver sensor, and location uh, is including the indoor location or outdoor GPS. And if you are using cloud, uh, wise pass, uh, NCS from the uh, MediaTek, Azure from the Microsoft, AWS, uh, GCP from Google, and different power solutions like the energy harvesting or renewable, uh, uh, new renewable energies. We are uh, really welcome you to join our program. And uh, for domain and uh, industry, there are four fields we are uh, care about. The first book is uh, healthcare. Uh, secondary will be the smart factory. Uh, and not, another two part is the logistics and the agriculture. So if you uh, have the solution uh, from the IoT and the domain and the industrial is related to the uh, full field, uh, it's a really welcome to join our programs. So the benefit uh, we can provide is uh, uh, the eight different fact, that including the engineer uh, verification, uh, design verification, like the reliability tester, uh, certification, you need to assess to different uh, country and marketing. Uh, we can also provide a consult for your small rock, uh, like five piece to 20 piece is okay for us. We can have also provide knowledge for you to how you can design your testing, how to uh, calibration your product, how to do the quality insurance for your product. And we can also provide the um, development uh, subsidies. So it's uh, around the 20%, 20 percent. Uh, we can get the, 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 the subsidy from the product development. And the minimal quantity is about uh, uh, 10, uh, 100,000 uh, Chinese dollars. And we can also provide a media service. Uh, this one we cooperate with a different partner, like uh, Blackstone is one of the important partner for media. And we also uh, provide the, some of the highway challenging talk formula and like the uh, workshop uh, by uh, our expert and business matching, of course. Uh, so the uh, mentoring plan is actually from uh, to define the need uh, to analyze your uh, the customer's need, improve the concept, and make sure the engineering uh, verification is good and the function of your product is good, and go to the design phase and do the small round, and finally we come up with to the mixed production. It's our mentor and our uh, in-house team, so we do have the mentor and our team. Most of them uh, uh, have over 10 years experience, especially in uh, semiconductor and uh, IC design or highway fields. So through Mighty Net program, we can actually help to uh, accept our partner, like the different chip solution, like the MediaTek, Microchip, RealTek, CSD Micro, Nodic, they are very famous uh, chip solution uh, provider. Uh, we can also uh, find a good agent to have the good cost of the component, like a WPI and WTP uh, group. And we can also help you to find a good design house, not just us. We have also many third party uh, design house. And we can also help you to find a good certification lab, like the SGS in Taiwan and TUV as well. And manufacturing, we have our own fake manufacturing. We also have partner manufacturer like the Kintag from Taiwan and we strong and very big uh, factory of uh, many for the uh, Apple. And we can also uh, introduce and link the cloud service for you like the AWS, Azure or uh, WisePass from Adventech. Another uh, partner like different accelerator, uh, different venture capital, uh, different media uh, uh, supplier, uh, or a lot of the Huawei star community, uh, especially in Taiwan, 
and the uh, south of the Asia. So the goal for us to link the highway uh, star is majorly for three things. As I just mentioned from the uh, last presentation, the first goal is uh, innovation. Good in innovation always attract good investment. And secondary will be the R&D, manufacturing and supply chain manager. The, sec the last one will be the need, the customer need, the user's need, how to manage your sales channel, how to market your product, how to forecast, how to plan your next generation of product. So there are basically three, three uh, topics we are trying to link and uh, stronger our uh, community. We also open uh, a platform we call the Mighty Link. It's a testing ground uh, inside of our uh, factory. So if you are, uh, have any uh, smart factory uh, related IoT device, you, you can use our uh, ground to test in your IoT. We already cooperated many uh, hardware staff to use their uh, dictator, like the temperature, humidity, uh, PN2.5 uh, air quality sensor, pressure sensor, quality sensor, and power sensing solution, and the location uh, dictator as well. So you can use our uh, uh, facility, no matter office or factory facility, to test your IoT solution. Since 2016, we started MightyNet. Uh, we already have uh, and service uh, over 120 highway staff. They are from many different countries, at least 12 uh, different countries, from Australia, um, North America, Mexico, Israel, uh, uh, Netherlands, uh, UK. Uh, of course, in Singapore, we have the Uhu, is a, uh, their headquarters is in Singapore. UNAB is their focus uh, in the SIGFAR solution. They, their headquarters is also in Singapore. And XCO, uh, they use a smart building solution. Onavera, Una, they are uh, build up the smart agriculture solution. So the timeline for our program is actually we are, uh, are going to uh, uh, launch our second base uh, last month. And uh, we are uh, going to, uh, the people who are interested in our uh, program, they can apply just now. And we plan to uh, uh, have the, over the 12th team to apply the, by the end of the September. And we will have the technical forum and the virtual uh, training. And we will have the demo day in November. And uh, we also will be uh, people to join the program will be always be part of our uh, community. So uh, we are going to uh, uh, hire uh, more and more and uh, IoT uh, hardware star. So if you are interested in more information, uh, you can scan the QR code uh, from the screen or send the uh, uh, email to our partner, uh, Blackstone, especially for uh, 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 SEA uh, area. So we are love to uh, see your uh, application and uh, have more cooperation with uh, all you guys. Okay, that's all. Yeah, maybe you can, you can leave at the screen a little oh, so that you can scan it. Yeah, I will provide the uh, information I just showed you guys. So everyone, if you are interested in the uh, slide, uh, please leave your uh, message and we can send the, uh, the PDF file for uh, each of you. Okay. Okay. Okay, so now we'll go to the open discussion session. Uh if you want to, you know, ask any question with your audio and you know uh video on, you can turn it on right now. Uh but for the audio, uh please mute it until you ask the question. So you can send some signal like the uh uh, me in the chat box whereby you want to ask the question okay so that we can coordinate accordingly yeah 
Uh, someone actually asked this question. I mean, before we begin, you can take some time to uh, on it. Uh, before we begin uh, the open discussion, someone actually asked this question whereby has this hardware industry started to think about sustainable packaging innovation in keeping up with the consumer demand uh, that increasingly uh, concern the environment? Yeah. So I think the, uh, for a consumer uh, demand, see, it will, of course, it will be uh, increased a lot. But we saw so, uh, the change is uh, actually uh, from the consumer to the other industry, like the uh, B2B, like textbook, agriculture. And this means, uh, especially for agriculture, it means that people will use the technology to change the world a little bit. And I would, would believe their uh, consumer uh, demand is still, will be still increased. But uh, the technology is not just for consumer. They will also the tool to help the way uh, of the bigger uh, environment uh, in the future. All right. Yeah. Another question is, what if my startup is not in the four industry that you actually stat, uh, stated earlier? So that is actually from one of the audience. So, but their solution can actually extended can be extended to those uh, industry eventually. Should they apply for the program? Uh, actually, uh, the four uh, field, the four industrial we mentioned mm -hmm. are actually very very uh, broad. So if you are, your technology is related to the IoT, is related to the connectivity wireless or smart power, uh, we are uh, welcome to uh, apply our program. But uh, it really depends on our uh, uh, our experience. Is it is a very, very new field uh, or is a very, very consumer field like the uh, smartphone? If you are going to build up the smartphone, I, I would say, it's, I'm sorry, it's not our uh, experience. We are not an expert to build up the smartphone. So that's why we select the, the full industrial. But if you are out of the this full industrial or for the field in IoT, uh, we are still welcome your uh, citation. Uh, AT actually asked this question. Thank you, thank you, Asri. AT asked this question that uh, the way to engage and explore Mighty Net service is actually to join the accelerator program. Is there any other way to engage uh, Mighty Net? Think yes. Uh, the program uh, as I just mentioned is supported by the government. Uh, so if you join the program, they will uh, more the benefit are uh, related to the uh, marketing media and also some event but if you are just going to build up a business uh, directly with the uh, factory or you already have the product need to go into the max production or uh, design phase uh, you can directly uh, discuss our team uh, together but, uh, uh, it's still welcome on uh, you to join our program because there are a lot of benefits not just related to the uh, technology or manufacturing, they are more uh, about the, the funding, uh, the marketing side, and also the media side. Right, understand. Okay. Yeah, uh, if, if there's anyone who would like to on their audio and video and ask personally uh, to where you can do so, you can share with us your name, where are you from, and uh, if you have any information that you would like everybody to know uh, who are you, you can also share it on the chat box, okay? Yeah. Yeah. So, one question. Uh, yeah, that's another question. Okay. Yeah. So, actually, the, the text, right? The has is the, the biggest is the a really famous uh, uh, accelerator, so majorly for Huawei. Uh, they are not just in Shenzhen, uh, they are from Shenzhen, they are also have office in San Francisco. Uh, we uh, visit uh, them uh, both great and they also visit us uh, last, last year. So we uh, actually know how uh, hacks do the operation. So for us, actually, the base is still uh, focused on the venture capital. 
they are much like the finance and the funding side. So they do have the small lab uh, between uh, Shenzhen and uh, San Francisco, but uh, they are not have their own facility. So we are also have some of the team, they actually join our program, but uh, they also join the hacks. At least two teams, they are from the hacks. So I would say, uh, well, even the hardware accelerator, uh, they have different goal and uh, uh, purpose. Uh, for hacks, they are much like the um, uh, venture capital uh, to find a good uh, investment of topic. For us, we are, are trying to find the next generation production uh, feed and production uh, customer uh, for our uh, new facility and uh, the, for our uh, group. So from us, we also do some uh, uh, cooperation venture, but it is only for a few uh, case. Not like have they uh, invest uh, all of them. Uh, their portfolio for us we are much focused on the technical support and uh, facility and net production all right is there any other question okay, if not i'll move on to the question that we received from uh partner uh, who actually asked me to ask on behalf of on them you know uh, how can a startup actually assess the capability of a manufacturer what actually affect their decisions uh, in using a particular manufacturer so is, is there like a some sort of few pointer checklist that they can think of mm, okay is it very good uh question so um i think the the first one is uh you need to think of the, the relationship between you and your factory. Because uh, when you are a startup, uh, you are small, and probably the factory is much bigger than you. So how to have the uh, good relationship with the factory is a thing. Especially uh, to have the relationship with the decision maker inside the factory. So, uh, so the first of all, I think the the idea is to uh, treat your uh, factory as uh, the first customer, uh, to extend your uh, product and to extend your business as more as possible to your uh, factory, to for them to understand your potential and understanding why they are good to uh, work with you, what the, the benefit you can bring to each other. I think is uh, the a uh, very uh, important concept from the staff. And secondary, uh, of course, is uh, related to the product uh, production experience, such as uh, waterproof capability, dust proof, and uh, different wireless capability capability. So if you are uh, you are going to build up your um, next generation product, if your factory or your partner, they are good, or they are, have enough experience to do for your next uh, generation product. And uh, how the factory to ensure their quality control, how they manage their quality system. Is there any certification they do have? For us, we, not just for the best, uh, best ISO 9000, and also the 14000, and also the medical certification and their uh, automotive certification as well and we uh, we are going to have the to to uh, apply the uh, uh, security certification as well so you need to check your uh, factory if they are going to uh, improve themselves what kind of quality system they are going to have in the future and uh, of course uh, the quantity and the forecast you need to um, clarify what kind of quantity uh, you do have for first lot but most important thing is uh, your forecast how you can uh, assure them uh, not just look at into the, the first order but uh, the forecast of your product so that's my comment for uh, 
manufacturing. Yeah, I would like to also add on a few points. Uh, I think in terms of location of the factory, it will also affect because it will actually affect the cost of you delivering or shipping uh, your item. Yeah, so this is probably something that you can actually think of. And also uh, in terms of the IP, yeah, so the credibility of the manufacturer uh, themselves, uh, like, and this, you know, find out a little bit, check with few people to understand uh, more about the, their credibility. Because sometimes you may face issue in terms of uh, being, you know, IP, the, the, the component of technology being, you know, taken away by someone else, copied by someone else, stuff like this. Yeah, so these are a few points that probably you can take note of. Yeah, thank you very for the sharing. Yeah. Okay, and we have more questions coming. Do you, you have something that on? Yeah, I think the sort of capitalism is a very uh, keen for everybody, not just mm -hmm. for uh, it's also for mm -hmm. the factory. So how to protect each other is very important. Mm -hmm. And for factory side, of course, uh, when you cooperate with the uh, with the manufacturing uh, side partner or factory, you need to sign the NDA uh, together. But uh, for the IoT side, they have the benefit to protect themselves. It's because their product is not just hardware. If mm -hmm. you have only, if you are just sell your product as a, a simple hardware, it's very easy to copy. But the most of IoT, they are not just hardware. They are also the software uh, from the cell phone, mm -hmm. from the laptop, from the web, and also the cloud service. So to protect your, uh, your product, uh, you, you can think of to have more uh, uh, technology barrier like this uh, software and cloud, and then the copycat is hard to copy your products. Yeah. Good suggestion. Yeah. We have also uh, many questions come in, and a few more questions come in. Yeah. Uh, what experience does my team that have for uh, electronic? Electric vehicles, uh, motorcycles, Google, uh, etc. These kind of companies. Do you, do you have any case study that you can share? Uh, actually, uh, for us, we hmm. actually have some of the uh, company. Uh, they are not staff. They are from the EVs and the motorcycles. And because we know the uh, Chinese motorcycles is very, very, uh, very, very uh, popular recently. So. Mm -hmm. um, People from the big uh, company, they are going to build up their uh, own uh, Chinese motorcycle, but not Google and not, not this one. But I, I would say, yes, we, we do have some experience uh, with uh, some uh, uh, Chinese motorcycles. Yeah. So, right. uh, for the next question. Okay. For hardware company, after we have the product, the next will be product distribution. So do you encourage startup to explore like traditional distributor uh, network or more on doing direct B2C e-commerce? Mm. Mm -hmm. I, I think I, I can have some comment, but, but Jesse, you can also have your point of view on the sure, uh, sure. e-commerce size. For, for, for my point of view, uh, if you are the... Uh, our company uh, to find the, the right distributor uh, is very important for the consumer. Of course, you you can uh, try the uh, crowdfunding. You can try the pre-sale from your uh, website or uh, find the uh, the local uh, distributor or agency. But to uh, for the local uh, distributor or the retailer, um, the payment term will be a pen point. So if you need to very, very careful uh, to discuss uh, the, the payment term with uh, the retailer. So my understanding, the payment term from the, the big or traditional uh, sale channel is really bad, uh, especially for the uh, power stock. I'll also add on to the distributor uh, question. So for distributor, uh, what 
our experience with uh, from our clients is uh, they actually face some issue regarding uh, depending on what kind of distributor you are looking for uh, exclusivity sometimes distributor will ask for exclusivity for a particular countries of a particular vertical in that country itself so this is the time where you have to weigh whether it's worth it to give it to this this distributor Okay, so uh, always have an agreement whereby there's a po sort of a probation period, a trial period, whereby they will be able to hit the KPI before you actually uh, sign a complete exclusive distribution right for, for a period of time, like a year or something. Yeah, because a lot of them, they are actually stuck in this situation whereby they actually give exclusive right to this particular distributor, but they do, did not really, really achieve their KPI or the target targeted uh, result that, that they want. So this is something that we want to consider. But another thing is also um, exclusivity. exclusivity may not be always like uh, essential. Uh, you do not need to always give exclusivity to a distributor. But of course, distributor will always want uh, some you know, value or motivation to even help you to sell. Some of them, they can be distributor of many, many products and you are just one of the products. So they may not have the motivation to push your product. So end up, they can be a distributor, but they may not you know, sell even one single product within that few months. So you have to be careful uh, in regards to selecting distributor. Uh, selling direct B2C to e-commerce, I would say depending on what kind of product. So like what Ray mentioned, crowdfunding can be one of the platform uh, but depending on which region are we talking about so crowdfunding may not be super popular in some uh, places or some uh, for some product um, yeah so in in like taiwan taiwan have the specific crowdfunding platform for the taiwan com taiwanese community so for singapore uh, singapore we are pretty much uh, using the international one uh, like kickstarter uh, indiegogo as such so uh, if you want to go direct b2 B2C e-commerce, I would advise not just uh, you know, bet on the direct E2C e-commerce. Unless you have many uh, like a lot of marketing dollars where you can spend uh, doing you know promotion, if that is the, uh, the nature of your business. If not, uh it will be better you can actually work with some strategic partners uh, to help you to push to uh, maybe enterprises who would be able to purchase in bulk to, to, to sort of give up as a free gift to, to their customers, stuff like that. There can be a lot of arrangement. Or sell it to enterprise, that would be probably uh, faster. Yeah, so we always like to go uh, go via the, the, the approach whereby you go top down, uh, go for a, big, like a bigger partner who able to give you access to a few other uh, uh, windows. Yeah. Okay, so that, that's my... Uh, Hot for that question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So the Move on to the next question. Yeah. Does my team actually assist, assist in drop shipping of manufactured products to end user, end customer? Yeah. And the, the logistic. Yes. <laughs> uh, we, we do a lot of drop shipment for our customers. Mm -hmm. uh, normally, the, uh, we, we call the trade term uh, mm -hmm. is an FOB Taiwan or F it will be Hong Kong or it will be uh, Singapore. So it means you still need to find the uh, local um, forwarder or carrier to mm -hmm. ship uh, to to your end customer. For us, we will ship our good. Uh, we have our own warehouse and we can ship no matter uh, in Singapore or uh, in uh, Hong Kong or uh, Taiwan. We can have a uh, uh, partner uh, warehouse and forwarder, but for our country, uh, it will be better to have your own forwarder and carrier to deal with uh, the, the final uh, logistic. Yeah. Uh, for this, we will be able to help uh, because if you're talking about uh, some of the country in Southeast Asia, uh, we have partners who specifically do like logistics, right. like importing. So maybe there's something that you can, uh, we can, you know, work it out if you are doing drop shipping from uh, Taiwan to to Singapore or to you know Malaysia or Thailand, or Indonesia. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Arison, for the question. Uh, Nancy. Nancy, are you are you saying that you will be sharing some experience as a hardware company or you're yeah, asking mm -hmm. the question? Actually, um, maybe it's better for me. Yeah. I figured I could <laughs> in, but, 
as as a person that has had experience being mm-hmm. um, having run a hardware company in the first place, and some of the things that um, that Mighty Night Share were, were great pieces because um, it's extremely challenging to be a hardware company. Um, our situation was not the design piece, but it was the funding piece because hardware is extremely expensive and to be able to get the product out was, uh, was quite difficult for us in the first place. Um, maybe a bit of background, but of course, Jaslyn knows me quite well and so the Blackstorm people, but I was running a hardware startup company um, in the area of telecommunications and we did do work in Taiwan quite a bit, not with Money and Muddy Net, with another company. And some of our challenges were, you know, just as someone was talking about, were things like distribution, things like manufacturing, things like how to get the financing behind us. And Blackstorm was extremely helpful in helping us to get um, some financing offers as well. So it might be helpful to understand that funding is going to be key and that crowdsourcing would be a great option. But, um, I mean, the design part was extremely easy, especially working with someone like Mighty Net would be, would be extremely helpful because they have an understanding how it works. When you have the idea for your product and the design, it's much simpler if you have someone that actually knows what they're doing in the first place. So that's, that's great and that's helpful. But um, I think a lot of the the challenges that people that are in this group going to have, they're going to be challenges in regards to how do they get their product to the market? How do they get the financing behind it? How are they be going to be able to get to whoever their end customer is, whether it's enterprise or B2B or B2C? So some of these, you know, things might be some, you know, thoughts that the people might want to have, especially coming after this call that might be, of interest of contacting Mighty Net and also Blackstorm as well. So I just, that was my, my little bit of feedback. It may be useful or not useful, but just thought I'd just throw in that idea. Very, very, very useful. Uh, I think, I think it's a really uh, good uh, comment for us. We, we think the uh, technical manufacturing design is just a bottleneck. But uh, actually, the pain point is from the funding, from the need. So to find the, the two factor uh, from the for the how we start is uh, really a uh, 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 most important uh, factor that the, the how we start can success. I believe that Jesse has lot of experience from from this point of view. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Nancy, for sharing your experience. Yeah, so we, we actually uh, talk to Nancy quite often. So, I mean, Nancy raised out a few, you know, this kind of, like, concern that you have. Uh, so, I'll be happy to uh, introduce Nancy to Ray to talk further, if there's anything that uh, he can help. Okay. So, the next question we have is from Ak- Akira from a, a drone company. So, for the timeline, I think mass production will be expected in the end uh, after the prototyping program. This after the hardware expense program, uh, he's expecting you know, some production. So, how many months or years do you expect a, a startup to, to reach that phase? So, how long do, you, do they need uh, to begin from uh, you know, conceptualizing to prototyping and to production? Yeah. Uh, for for a personal uh, digital device or a consumer a product, so I would say the normally would uh, take the one to three months to have the prototype, and the, another uh, six or uh, another four to six months to the uh, mass production. So let's say uh, it will take a little uh, half year or uh, twelve months to go from the prototype to mix production. But the, you mentioned you are a drone company, right? So I do believe drone is the exception for the uh, timeline because uh, uh, it's not easy to manufacture or development drone. So it's really uh, need to uh, check uh, what kind of drone you are going to build up. Is for agriculture, for logistics, for aerospace, or is for uh, 
uh, uh, army, so it's a really different field. And I, I don't think it's a uh, easy product. We do have some experience with the uh, at least three drone company, so we help them to build out the uh, electronic module and also some mechanical design. So we understanding to build out the drone is not an easy job. So it's really depend on, and we are we are willing to. I'll discuss more uh, detail uh, after after the year. Okay, thanks Ray. Uh, thanks Akira for the question. Okay, do you have plan to expand MightyNet office in other countries? We have a friend from uh, Vietnam, I believe, who asked this question. It's a good question. Uh, the the reason we are going to cover it, we see a block zone is uh, we are uh, really single to build up the, our. Uh, next uh, sales office or sales agent uh, in Singapore. So this is a, a plan, uh, but it's not, uh, not uh, happening yet because you know uh, the COVID-19 situation. Uh, so we cannot travel uh, anymore. Uh, we cannot tra travel this year, but for uh, last year, we at least went to Singapore three times and the Japan three times and many uh, other uh, different uh, country to visit our, our customer and also uh, link to the uh, different highway community of the world. But uh, for the next office, probably will be uh, Singapore. Right, yeah. So Singapore probably will be the next office for Martinet. Okay. Uh, does Martinet has any experience working with ultrasound sensor? Uh, the ultrasound sensor we use uh, for some uh, application. Uh, the one is for AGV. Uh, they use the AGV to prevent uh, some parts and some, uh, 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 some uh, road detector. And another uh, ultrasound uh, sensor we used before is for the uh, water uh, light detector. So we, unfortunately, we don't have the uh, experience except for the two applications I, I just mentioned. But if you are uh, specializing the ultrasound sensor, or you are going to build up the ultrasound sensor a device, we are glad to uh, talk. Uh, we, we still have some experience uh, uh, in it. Thank you. Jesse, you are you are mute. All right, thanks. <laughs> okay, AT, hey, uh, th thanks for the question. Uh, maybe after this, you can actually talk to Ray further. Uh, what, what is the feature that you are looking for for the ultrasound sensor? Okay, uh, do you have any more questions from the audience? Okay, yeah. Okay, anyway, it's okay. So after this uh, this event, uh, if you have any further discussion, you need any further discussion, uh, be it with ourselves or be it with uh, Ray, you can always email us uh, and also to find out more about the Mighty Net program. So if you have registered in Eventbrite, uh, we will actually, uh, you know, send you some information regarding the registration link for the program and uh, this session will be recorded so there will be uh, you know it will be publicized in like youtube things like that so all this will be sent out uh, eventually okay so thank you for being with us today and we are very happy to have you with us so that's all for for the event okay Wait, do you have anything to do you want to do? Uh, I, I go up to have the ability to ensure my school and, and I uh, we, we, our team and I are uh, going to uh, serve and uh, uh, help all of uh, the highway uh, or highway community to go up. So anything related to the highway maker, uh, please just let us know. We are uh, uh, pleased to share more information with you and uh, join us uh, for the uh, program. Well, thank you. Sure. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.